I'm going to concentrate on key operational and strategic level uh, military issues rather than tactical detail, but if you've got questions on tactical detail, I can help. Uh, for most of the last two years, the ISIS fighters have been more effective than the majority of their opponents. And of its estimated 20 to 30,000 fighters, there's a mixture of tough, experienced, and well-trained people, and as Emil has put it, less well-trained people, but who are willing to act as cannon fodder. It certainly seems to have effective military commanders. The vast swathe of territory it, it, it controls has effectively given it much of the appearance of, of, of a state in that area. And we mustn't forget that there is also a well-established insurgency in Sunni areas in and around Baghdad, which has not been eradicated by Iraqi government forces or militias. ISIS also cooperates to a greater or lesser extent with some other Sunni insurgent groups. And as well as um, having an insurgent element, it's assembled more conventional forces, which have been, been effective. It's shown effective higher level tactics and indeed elements of the operational art. It appears to constantly probe for weaknesses, identifying gaps that it exploits to outflank or unhinge its enemies. It's made some use of captured weapons and equipment, including material seized in Mosul to help with its attacks in Syria. It's also shown itself to be an adaptable organization, perhaps the most adaptable insurgency that we've seen so far this century. And this was demonstrated by the way it adjusted its tactics um, over the autumn to reduce its uh, vulnerability to coalition air power and I-STAR systems. As Emil said, it also conducts a modern and sophisticated propaganda operation to garner international jihadist volunteers, financial donations, and support. Uh, this includes highly effective YouTube and Twitter operations. It runs an economy to generate revenue and help it sustain the populations that it controls. This includes smuggling, looting antiquities, uh, oil trading, and kidnappings. It's introduced slavery. And it seeks to impose its governance by a variety of methods, including a, a harsh form of Sharia, draconian punishment, uh, religious proselytization, and attempting to provide good and, goods and services. Now, I, I agree with Emile's assessment that it needs to maintain momentum, um, both militarily and to sustain its image. There's also an important economic uh, known unknown, the extent to which the ISIS business model is based on continuing to capture further resources or the extent to which it can actually work at steady, at steady state. Now, President Obama's uh, 10th September announcement of US strategy was pretty clear. It had four pillars, systematic campaign of airstrikes against ISIS, increased support to local forces fighting ISIS on the ground, and increasing their uh, non-lethal and lethal assistance to the Syrian opposition. Uh, defensively drawing on counter-terrorism capabilities to prevent ISIS attacks and providing humanitarian support. And of course, Obama announced that the US will build a coalition of partners to assist, and he stressed the importance of enlisting Arab nations that can help mobilize Sunni communities. Um, I reckon today the coalition has 60 declare members, 33 of which are making sufficient of a military contribution to send delegates uh, to a planning conference held uh, two weeks ago at US CENTCOM, and 12 nations are actually conducting airstrikes. Um, the airstrikes themselves did prevent ISIS from re reaching Baghdad and Erbil, and were decisive in preventing the fall of Kobani, and in creating the conditions for some recent local counterattacks by Kurdish and Iraqi forces. But despite it, the adaptations it's made, ISIS still displays considerable offensive capability. We can actually discern the contours of the US military strategy from abundant uh, public statements by <coughs> President Obama and US officials. The first part of the campaign is to counter ISIS in Iraq. And this is the US main effort with attacks in Syria designed to shape the battle in Iraq. The second part is to train and equip Syrian opposition forces. And finally, there would be a uh, major attack on ISIS in Syria. The Iraqi army has lost about four divisions worth of combat power. Um, the, the US has announced deployment of advice and assistance teams alongside Iraqi forces down to brigade level. And nine Iraqi army brigades and three brigades of Kurdish Peshmerga are to receive this. Indeed, uh, at least one team has deployed forward into Anbar province in the last few weeks. 
Now, the US plans that, and I quote here, over the coming year, once these brigades have been withdrawn from the front line, re-equipped and retrained, there would then be a broad counter-offensive in conjunction with increased coalition air support. And clearly, the political and economic importance of Mosul means that retaking it would be the decisive point of such an operation. This would pose ISIS with some interesting choices. Should it do a fighting withdrawal in Iraq? Uh, should it hold, Iraq, hold the areas of Iraqi controls? Or should it even reinforce for Syria? Some of which would create opportunities for coalition air power. But creating, clearing ISIS from populated areas requires more than tactical counterattack. It also requires full spectrum counterinsurgency. And it's questionable whether the Iraqi uh, political and security leadership have the leadership and the will to apply the sort of careful and nuanced counterinsurgency that was applied by US and Iraqi forces in the previous decade. And widespread employment of near autonomous Shia militias in such operations could only make things worse as Sunni areas are cleared. Of course, ISIS will make good use of the time to continue to increase political control over the areas they occupy, preparing fighting positions and IEDs to make the offensive as costly as possible. They will also be seeking to create opportunities for US and Iraqi and coalition forces to inflict civilian casualties uh, to erode their legitimacy. And they may well have been inspired by Hamas's recent defense of Gaza. Now, the campaign is already a complex activity. It will probably become more complex still. And Iraqi politics may be the critical limiting factor on the military dimension in Iraq. It, ISIS ISIS's extremely effective information operation is working, not least because of the simplicity and clarity of its messages, and also the way uh, Western international media amplify these. Now, it's not clear to me that either the Iraqi government or the coalition's information operations are adequately contesting this battle of the narrative in information space, cyberspace, call it what you will. And there seems to be a particular lack of a government of Iraq-led full-spectrum information operation in Iraq itself. Of course, as time goes on, although the air campaign is designed to minimize and avoid civilian casualties, the cumulative risk of the coalition strike accidentally causing significant civilian casualties cumulatively rises. Um, coalition politics are also a risk. I suspect that within the coalition, there are very differing views about whether Iraq or Syria mm -hmm. is the main, main effort. Now, once the operation moves to defeat ISIS in Syria, which isn't likely to happen for, um, for about a year after Congress releases President Obama the money he's requested, um, the political risk and complexity increases. In a sense, Iran's aims are aligned with the coalition in Iraq, but of course then uh, Iran's aims are not aligned with the coalition in the US and Syria. Um, Mao Zedong once said, war is the highest form of struggle for resolving contradictions. Avoid, once it comes to attacking ISIS in Syria, the political and military contradictions are going to be very difficult to resolve. <clears throat>